And, and before um, life changed so drastically, which it, it did, and we'll see uh, the long-term effects, but we talked a lot about sports rights and, and media rights and how valuable all these things were becoming. Um, so we do have some news from the PGA Tour about this, but at the same time, we can talk to, uh, to Jay about what you do uh, with venues. With, now we're seeing maybe there's no fans at, at, at March Madness. Anyway, this deal, um, as we say, pretend we can go back a couple of weeks, 70% more reportedly the deal for the PGA than the previous deal. So joining us to talk all about that, PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan uh, is here in, in studio uh, with us, and we'll also talk about contingency plans for, for what we do. LeBron yeah. uh, in basketball says he's not going to play without fans, but there are some, some things being bandied about that we, we never really thought about before. Uh, yep. First, talk about your deal. That's, it, it, you probably won't confirm it's 70%, but it's, it's, it's a lucrative uh, deal, much more than the last one. I won't, it, but it's, uh, it's a testament to our players that um, we've got some of the best media companies in the world that, have, that are standing up and standing forward, and we'll commit to the PGA Tour through 2030. From a network standpoint, we're extending with uh, CBS and NBC uh, in a transformative partnership. Uh, on a, from the cable side, we will continue with Golf Channel. Uh, and then from a streaming standpoint, starting in 22, we'll take what is now PGA Tour Live and move it to ESPN+. Plus. So for us, uh, this is an opportunity to continue to innovate, uh, to continue to evolve in a dynamic marketplace, the media marketplace, with some of the best companies in the world. And uh, it's a meaningful day for our players. We also think it's a meaningful day for our fans, and that's what's very exciting. All... Uh the different sports leagues have to figure out, you know, how much streaming, how much yeah. do we, we don't want to become, yeah. you know, we don't want too much out there, right? In, and I guess that's a, a balance you've tried to, uh, to, to maintain as well. well I, think, I think the most important thing in a period of uncertainty is to focus on reach. And so when we looked at all the opportunities, and there were a lot of opportunities to the point you're making up front, value, sports rights are extremely valuable. When you come out the back end of it, you want to be positioned in a way where you've maximized your reach. And so to be free to air with NBC and CBS, to be at the home of golf on cable 24-7 with the Golf Channel, and to be on this prolific sports ecosystem with ESPN+, Plus, our fans, young fans across the entire demographic spectrum are now going to be able to find us and we'll be producing a lot more content with those partners than we've ever so produced before. Have you, have you talked about the, the 50,000 people being in the same place on a golf It's bigger, obviously, than an arena, but is that on your radar? And, have and we what, talked about it? We sure have. Yeah, and what, it's, what's uh, the answer to that? Well, I think, you know, stepping back and looking at our sport, you know, our tournaments are played over three, 400 acres. And we have 156 players that are playing in a given a week, more. right? Yeah. And, and so for us... I, I've, been on, I've been on the greens where you're standing right around in a crowd looking at right. the one player you're waiting to come through. But I think what we've tried to do, we've stood up a business around this subject, and we did so several weeks ago. And we have leaders within our company that are, that are pouring themselves into this. And as you've heard from other leagues, as you've heard from other... Uh, sports and entertainment properties, you've got to rely on experts. So relying on the CDC, the World Health Organization, and given the fact that we're playing 175 tournaments across six tours, playing all over the world, and this is an Olympic year, you've got to rely on what's happening on the ground in that marketplace, and no two markets really let are the same. Let me same. ask you the straight up hard question, yeah. which is what kind of insurance do you have? And, and the reason I ask that is because if you really understand why, these le why a lot of leagues can't shut down effectively, yeah why they need to actually play is because they don't have insurance that would uh, that would effectively pay for all of this yeah. so it's much more lucrative or even just sensible economically to keep the game going yeah. even and, and lose the tickets ticket sales as opposed to lose everything well I, I uh listen, I don't think this comes down to what your insurance is Andrew I think this ultimately is about what is what's the state of that marketplace and is right. it safe for your fans and your players to be operating a tournament in our case. And so we ultimately, if we're put in a spot where we right. feel like we're not there, then you're just going to go and do the right thing. Right. And you would either postpone or you would cancel for a year. Right. Um, but you know, we certainly have insurance in certain cases, but that will not be the basis for which you make a decision. And, you could and certainly hold a golf tournament with no galleries. I mean, I don't know about an NBA game without uh, that, but if you had to, you could. You could, Joe, but, but when you have 156 players, you've got, you know, we've got our shot link system. You've got to make sure that 
Uh, you know, you've got volunteers in place that the food oh, it's and hard. beverage, it, the yeah. club. There, there's, you still have a fairly sizable operation. So, so you, yeah. All right. Is this so? This is occupying this new deal. Congratulations. But this other thing is probably occupying the lion share of your time right now, is it not? It, it, it certainly is. Yeah, I, I don't okay. think there's anybody. And, and another point I'll make is that we're working with. We got 120 corporate partners. So in every market, if you talk about the quality of companies we work with, those same companies and their leaders are spending the same amount of time on this subject. Okay. So I was talking over right. the weekend with a number of. We're at least speaking though across across all of yeah. sport. Between how do we, what are the sponsor arrangements with most leagues in terms of this issue? What are the network deals mm -hmm. in terms of this issue? Yep. If there is no audience. Does, do the economics of this change beyond the ticket sales? Do you have to play? Do you not have to play? Well, I mean, everybody's looking through the MAC clauses you'd this like weekend to play, on all of this stuff. You'd like to play. You don't have to play. I think, Andrew, it comes down to common sense. So in our case, you look at it week to week, tournament right. to, to right. tournament, and if you're not going to play, then you respond accordingly. And the right. question is, are you going to postpone or are you permanently not playing if it? If you didn't play for months on end, what happens? You know, we would cross that bridge when we get there, but that would have a obviously right. a very significant impact on a number of people, including right. our players, because of now course. you're affecting careers. No, of course. But we're talking about that, right. every scenario. Thank you. Can, I, can I just conclude with yeah. um, this really is a monumental day for the PGA Tour. We couldn't be more proud and thankful for the partners that have stood up, and it's a testament to our athletes, and it's a testament to our business model winning formula with the companies that have supported us and have made long-term commitments. So. We're committed to continuing to take our great game forward, and I appreciate you having me today. You're Thank welcome, you. Mr. Commissioner. Thank you uh, for being on set Thank you. Uh, with us. We, we appreciate it, Jay. Thank you.